Hello, I'm Aaron Podbelski with Cypress Semiconductor, and today I'd like to introduce the PSOC Development Kit. The Development Kit works with the PSOC 1, PSOC 3, and PSOC 5 architectures, and is available online today at cypress.com slash PSOC. Let's take a look to see what's included in this kit. The kit consists of a development baseboard and uses a processor module scheme, which allows PSOC 1, PSOC 3, and PSOC 5 to be plugged in it. The kit comes with the CY8C28 family processor module, the CY8C38 family processor module, the CY8C55 family processor module, and the MiniProg 3, which programs PSOC 1, PSOC 3, and PSOC 5, as well as supports debug capabilities. The kit is made up of the power area, prototype area, and processor module area. The power area consists of a flexible power domain system. The DVK can be powered via wall outlet, 9 volt battery, or USB. You also have the ability to change the voltage to the chip as well as the voltage to the analog and digital rails. The prototype area consists of an RS-232 connector, a USB connector, header for the radio, potentiometer for analog comparisons, mechanical buttons, cap sense slider, cap sense buttons, an LED array, and a prototyping area breadboard which easily connects up to the I.O. of the processor module that you're using. The processor module area has multiple jumpers that allow you to select the voltage settings for different I.O. These are the connectors for the processor module. There's also an LCD screen on board. Additionally, there are four I.O. headers which allow you to connect to Cypress expansion board kits or boards you make yourself. Let's take a look at an example project in PSOC Creator. The start page of PSOC Creator shows what kits you have installed allowing you to easily navigate example projects. Under the Kits and Solutions tab, we see that we have the CY8C Family Processor Module Kit installed. Opening that up, it shows the six example projects that we ship with that kit. Let's take a look at the ADC to LCD project. Click the project and it asks you to browse to select where you want to install the project. Let's go with the default. The Workspace Explorer on the left hand side shows all of the files associated with the project. This includes the schematic, the design wide resources, as well as your header and .c files. Let's take a look at the main schematic by double clicking top design. The schematic here shows a basic design which has a signal coming in externally from PSOC, coming into a Delta Sigma ADC which quantizes the data and then is outputted on an LCD character display. Let's take a look at how each of these are actually configured. By double clicking on a component it will open up the configuration window so you can see everything that you can customize about that peripheral. So we can change the name up here which will leave the same. You can change the power modes how a conversion mode goes, the resolution of the ADC, in this case from 8 bits to 20, the sampling rate, as well as how you want the conversion to start, its clock source, its input range, what type of reference it's using, as well as any type of gain you'd like associated with that ADC. Now when we take a look at the pin, we can open that up and see that it's an analog input pin. Notice that it's also set to a high impedance analog out of the eight different selections that you can choose. You'll notice that every single component has a data sheet associated with it. When you click on the data sheet, it opens it up in an external reader and allows you to go through it to determine all of the characteristics associated with that component as well as API calls. Now let's take a look at the design-wide resources. Located here, double-clicking this opens up the design-wide resources. The design-wide resources file opens up and shows you the exact pinout of the project you're using. It lists all of the pins that you have 
in your project and allows you to map those to specific pins on the actual package. From here you can actually click down and select which one you would like or you can actually drag and drop the pins to whichever pin you'd want it to be on. Now let's take a look at the main.c file. Opening this up shows all of the comments in the code and it's a fairly basic design. Basically, what's going on is we're starting our Delta Sigma ADC and starting up our character display and setting the specifications of where we want to write on the LCD. Then we display an initial count on the LCD and then we start conversion with the ADC. This while loop then waits for the end of the conversion, sets the range, and then actually updates the display with the character count from the LCD. Now let's go ahead and build this project by clicking build and build the project. As you can see, the build succeeded. Now we're going to go ahead and actually program our DVK with this. Right now I have the Miniprog 3 connected up to my PC and I have the Miniprog connected to the processor module on the DVK and the DVK is powered by the wall outlet. I'll click debug and program. As you see the device was successfully programmed. Let's take a look at the actual board. As you can see We've installed the PSOC 5 processor module on the DVK. We've connected up the Miniprog 3 to the processor module with the included ribbon cable. We've wired the potentiometer to one of the IOs that's connected to the PSOC 5 processor module. The LCD screen is displaying the counts value from the ADC, and as we change the pot, you'll see the screen update the value. And with a simple project, we were able to create and program a design which takes in an analog value and displays it on an LCD screen. Thank you for watching this video walkthrough of the PSOC development kit. For more information on PSOC, please visit cypress.com slash PSOC.